Welcome everyone to another live stream. I'm here to share with you some tips, advice and information about your driving test or indeed about your whole learning to drive experience. So if you've got a question for me, get it in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer it. You can email me as well, danetai at gmail.com and I will get back to you with an answer to any question you might have. And if you'd like me to review your report sheet, your driving test report sheet, I'll do that as well. So just let me know. The email is not on screen, but it should be in the description, danetai at gmail.com. If you do want to apply for your driving test or manage your driving test in any way, it's through the My Road Safety um, online website, online portal, myroadsafety.ie. You cannot ring up the RSA anymore to talk about your driving test or to request a cancellation. The days of cancellation lists are practically gone now. Uh, they do have a priority list for people who are working in the front line of hospitals and nursing homes and things like that. So doctors, nurses, midwives, there is a special um, list for them. But for everybody else, you just have to handle it through the myroadsafety.ie uh, online portal where you'll be, you get your invitation and hopefully you'll you'll find that the waiting list won't be too long these days, hopefully. I'll, I'll go into a bit more detail on that. Uh, but that's where you go now to handle your driving test. And void check is first in for a change. Uh, you was late the last few times. Void check, jing dobre, yaktam. So Wojciech says he's on time. Yeah, you're not. Don't worry about that. Nima problemu, as we say in Polish. And actually have some time to... Well, that's good, Wojciech. Feel free to jump in with any questions, comments, or if you want to share your experience, whether it's Wojciech or anybody else, if you want to share your experience of the driving test or your lessons so that I can analyze that or see how you get on and others can learn from that too, okay? Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoy this and you can subscribe as well. Subscribing costs nothing. It just means you'll be doing me a small favor uh, by subscribing to this channel. Uh, you can support me by Revolut and PayPal if you wish. Completely voluntary links will be in the description. The sign on the screen here is for a loop road. The answer is already there. So this is a loop road. And I want to ask you, where would you, where would you see this sign? Like in what kind of road or roads would you see this sign? So anybody, can, if anyone want to let me know about that, boy check, you probably know that. Where would you see this loop road sign? It's a relatively new sign, as in it's come on in the last, I don't know, seven or ten years. So where would you see this sign most likely? Okay. Um, so I will be getting to your comments very soon. Once they come in there, once some more comments come in, I will be answering any questions you have. But first of all, I just want to get started with a few updates and a few um, news items, I suppose, that you might, may be aware of, but you might not be aware of. Okay, and this is in this is in no particular order now. I, I just have them all kind of scribbled down here, not in any particular order. So some some will be to do with the driving test, some with NCT and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, I ran a poll there on my YouTube community tabs page asking you what's the story with the logbook? Do you get your logbook from your instructor? Um or does the instructor keep it? Or do they fill it out? And a very, very small percentage of you said that the uh, driving school or the driving instructor keeps the logbook okay let me let me let me say this in as clear as possible language the driving instructor or the driving school should give you the logbook on the first lesson and then it's yours to keep because it's your possession you should pay four or five euro for it and it stays with the learner driver the learner logbook does not stay with the driving school or the driving instructor. If they're doing that, they're acting against the law and it's not the right thing to do because the learner driver owns it. And if the learner driver wants to bring that to another driving school or another instructor in the future, he or she has that right. So make sure if you're learning to drive, you have possession of the logbook, not the driving school. Okay. Um, got an email recently from someone who was doing the cushion ramps. So the cushion ramps are these little small um, sort of square-ish shaped ramps that are in the middle of the lane, but the ramps might not extend the whole way across the road. And she said that the driving tester marked her down for uh, not avoiding it. Now, I want do, do you have any experience of that, or do you know, um, can you remember what your own instructor or tester said about that? Because, I well, I know what the rules are like, but I want to hear your experience. The cushion ramps are not to be avoided. The, the idea of those cushion ramps, the ramps that are just covering a part of the lane, is so emergency vehicles and trucks and buses and things like that can avoid them. 
it's not so cars can uh, avoid them as well because what would be the point in having them there then but sometimes maybe on very wide lanes you may be able to straddle them successfully it, it does depend on the layout so i just want to hear your feedback on that if, if you have any feedback or if you have any experience on that okay sasha munar i have my test in two weeks can't stop thinking about it yeah i know it's probably a stressful time i always say if you try and live in the moment live in the present uh, most of the things we stress about are from thinking about the past and thinking about the future so if you just live in the moment sasha you'll have a better chance i have a video on that if you'd like to check it out driving test nerves uh, email me if you if you want and i'll send you the link um so let me know about those cushion ramps if you have any uh, um, input on that folks nct so there is a three month extension on nct's now so if you are going to do your driving test and your nct is out of date by up to three months so if it's out of date by one month two months or three months if your nct is out of date by three months but you have proof that you have a, a, an nct test coming up that could be an email from the nct or a text or a letter of some type then the test will go ahead so that's the rsa just trying to mitigate the fact that the waiting times for nct's are very very high in certain parts of the country in fact and probably in the majority of parts of the country so it's good that we have that little extension on the nct as well you can always check it on the nct website you can you can just type in your reg on a certain part of the website and it'll be able to tell you then whether it's uh, due an NCT or whether you have the extension, because the driving tester is going to use the same website to type in your reg anyway. So that's one way of, of finding that out. But it's good news that you have the extension, folks. But it's only three months now. If your NCT is out of date by more than three months, not going to work, okay? Moving on. Um, yeah, just a small one. Just make sure your green slip, you know your insurance disc, make sure that the little green slip on the side, it's usually on the on the left side when you hold it up it depends make sure that that is clearly printed out and it's clearly displayed you have got to have that green slip on the insurance disc clearly showing a few months ago when i i got i updated my insurance obviously i have the green slip and all that but it, it was only a tiny little bit shown because i wanted the the, the date and the expiry date to to show more clearly and the driving examiner actually took it out and just refolded it up so the green slip will, will be shown more clearly so they're particularly finicky on this folks okay and a lot of people now due to covid and all that kind of stuff they're sort of printing out their own insurance documents at home some people are depending on the insurance company i know mine still posts them out like but if you are printing it out uh, just make sure that you don't cut out the, the green piece on the insurance disc or that you don't fold it over or tear it off because there is a strong possibility if you do that the driving test will not go ahead okay so don't forget that folks the green slip on the insurance disc very important to have it clearly shown okay moving on then to um another email i got from someone um this one was let me see yeah she was talking about her driving lessons and she was asking me about um like what way is the normal way to do driving lessons now all driving instructors are different they have their own ways of doing things and they, they might have their own style but basically her uh problem i suppose was that she was doing very very little driving and the instructor was talking for what seemed like um three quarters of the lesson like, like she would do two hour lessons and basically for an hour and an hour and a quarter she'd be sitting down in the car talking or going over theory or something like that and I, and I was kind of thinking well I, I don't know what that's about like maybe the instructor is worried about his petrol and he's trying to say petrol I don't know but if you're not happy with your instructor and the way they're doing things just say it to them because it's very important in the driving lessons that you get actual practical driving experience as an instructor if I'm giving lessons to someone I'm going to assume that they're pretty okay on the theory I'll send them videos I'll send them links to questions and road signs but it's not I, I don't see it as my job to teach somebody theory and road signs at least not at least not maybe i might spend five or ten percent of the time on it maximum but it's my job to teach somebody the practicalities of driving so if you're getting driving lessons from a driving school and they're sitting in the car waffling on about uh, a sign or waffling on about some theory questions ask yourself the question would you not be better off just actually driving more getting more practical driving in because that's where you really see the improvements okay so make sure you, you you're aware of that you should be driving not talking for the majority of the lesson and if you're not happy you can always go somewhere else 
Moving on then to the another, just I'm randomly going out up and down here with things. In the driving test, folks, make sure you know how your secondary controls work, okay? So this is very important. Got an email there a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago. A guy was lost marks on secondary controls because he didn't adjust the wipers. So it was raining, and then the rain became very, very light. And even though the rain was very light, he still had his wipers on full blast, okay, because it was a shower. And because he was so focused and because he was so concentrating on what he was doing, he just didn't spot that the wipers were going like that too fast when the rain was over and, you know, the, 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 it was actually drier. So this is where eco driving comes in. Um, if you're not slowing down your wipers or turning them off when you don't need them, that means that you're wearing down the wipers and it's bad for the environment, okay? And eco driving is a big part of the whole driving uh, thing at the moment. So make sure that you're focused and that if the rain is a bit lighter or it stops, that you turn off your wipers. And then if it's heavier, you turn them back on. Your, your, your wipers have to reflect the conditions, okay? You can't just leave them on all the time, okay? And I understand your people are probably just so concentrated and so focused. But the same goes for your demisters. Like, if you see the back demister, you don't, you'll often see the, the little square button with the with the square white symbol and the three little lines, squiggly lines going up. That means you it's the button to heat the back window or demist the back window. If your back window is fogged up or it has condensation, make sure you press that button or you get your blowers on because you don't want your windows fogging up in the test. And then when the windows are nice and clear, then just turn it down to one. I wouldn't turn it down to zero. I'd, I'd turn it down to one on, in the winter in case because it could fog up again, okay? So you can talk to your instructor about that, but just make sure you know how all the controls in your car work from the lights to the wipers to the demisters and you use them accordingly and then you kind of don't use them then when you don't need them to save energy and it's better for the environment, okay? Moving on then, masks. Um, a lot of people are asking about are, are face masks still being worn for the test? The answer is yes, they are in general, okay? So it's strongly advised that the candidate will wear um, a mask and of course sanitize their hands. There'll be sanitizers inside the test centers anyway. So it's not, it's not like the it's not like you have to wear masks and that's it then, but it's strongly advised that you do wear masks on your driving test. And that's the general advice. Most of the people that I've had in Wexford have, uh, sorry, all the people I've had have, have worn masks anyway. And I suppose you just think of it as a courtesy thing just in case the tester has underlying conditions or if the tester's nervous, it's just better to wear the mask then, you know. Um, th it used to be the case that the tester would get out of the car when you did your reverse around the corner so that he, he wouldn't be in too close proximity as you were turning your head to observe and all that. But as far as I'm aware, that's not taking place anymore from this week, okay? They will stay in the car for the reverse around the corner. But masks are strongly advised, and of course, as are hand uh, sanitization protocols and all that stuff as well. Um, and it's taught that the, the mask wearing advice will, be this, will stay the same for the foreseeable future. Moving on then, um, still on the protocols with COVID, the examiner's are going to be having the windows down now the recommend the guidelines are or the what they say they'll have them down is by three and a half inches so and this is including no, no matter what the weather like i mean they, they might bring it up a little bit in the if it's wet like because it's not it's not a great look having rain coming in and all that but but they are going to have the windows down at least three and a half inches anyway okay and that's just for ventilation so that the air circulates around the car it's probably not a bad thing because the more air to circulate in the car, the less likely your windows are to get fogged up anyway. So that's a win-win, I think. Moving on then. In the future, there is going to be, uh, hopefully, a sat-nav test. So part of your driving test will consist of the learner driver following the directions of a satellite navigation system to take them to a certain destination on the test centre. Now, there has been pilot programmes on that um, in recent years. I don't have a great deal of feedback on it, but... It has taken place and it is hoped that it will come in very, very soon. Maybe there will be more pilot um, tests done on it in the next six months or a year, hopefully. But it's basically just a test um, the learner driver, how they find the directions independently without the, without the guidance of the tester. The screen that they hope to do it on is a four and a half inch sat nav screen. Okay, so that's usually big enough, um, it should be plenty big enough to help the learner to see where they're going um, for directions. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when I, when I know more about that, but the, the plan is to bring it in as well. 
I wish they'd bring in parallel parking and bay parking as well and a few other things, but uh, looks looks like that's the one that's happening at the moment. The changes with the driving test are very incremental and very slow in this country. Okay then, so moving on then, folks, about refunds for cancelled tests. The RSA, <clears throat> they do offer a refund if your test has been cancelled um, by 24 hours or less notice. So you can request a refund um, for the use of the driving school car, for example, if you've hired and paid for uh, a driving school car to hire, which could be 80, 90, 100, 120 or more euro, depending on the driving school. And once you have receipts to back this up that are stamped by the driving instructor, you can send them into the RSA um, driver testing section. I think it's uh, Crow. I forget the name of it, Crowley or something like that. But it's not that hard to find out. But just so you know, if if you you shouldn't be out of pocket then if your test is cancelled less than twenty four hours notice. Okay, the RSA will uh, pro process a refund for the hire of the driving school car. Okay. Um. Next little update. Then let's see what we have. Yeah, as I was saying to you at the start of the stream here folks if you need to handle or manage your driving test application whether you're looking to change dates or you're looking to check on your invitations or whatever it's on the myroadsafety.ie online portal now there's no cancellation lists anymore as such okay they they do process certain cancellations if you're like in uh, frontline medical care like a doctor or nurse something like that but the days of ringing up the RSA and looking for a cancellation, those days are gone, okay? So everything now has to be handled on the My Road Safety portal, okay? I think I mentioned that at the start. I'm just mentioning it again just in case, okay? Um, next then, the general, the last one, last update, like, generally speaking, the waiting list for doing a driving test in Ireland is about 15 weeks, okay? Now that, of course, is going to vary from test centre to test centre. So in parts of Cork, maybe Nace, Galway, and certainly a lot of Dublin, it's going to be maybe a little bit higher, okay, because they're busier, they have colleges, universities there, so, but in, in other places, it might be down to 11 or 12 weeks, like, for example, in Wexford. But on average, it is about 15 weeks at the moment. Now, there are extra testers being hired um, during the month of October, so they are hoping to take on more testers, and that number will hopefully go down gradually. The number of weeks it takes to do a driving test will come down, hopefully, as new driving testers are employed and I read as well that there's recently in the news there's 4,600 people on learner permits for over a quarter of a century so that is quite an interesting figure I don't think it's all that shocking I, I think some people just put put it off and they end up renewing their learner permit and not bothering getting the full license because they're able to do that because the system is designed that way and Maybe in the future there'll be some way of, of putting a stop to that by saying you, you you have to you can't get a learner permit unless you actually do a driving test or something. I know there is there, they have that in at the moment, like you have to have proof of a test if you want to get a third permit, but I just thought that was interesting. Four thousand six hundred um on learner permits over twenty five years. Anyway, it's not really relevant to us. So they're the main um updates that I have for you uh today, folks, on this live stream. Gonna get there's a good few comments coming in there, so I'm gonna get to the comments. And then I'm going to get on to this driving test report sheet where I'm going to share some feedback on this test. You can see it was like it's not the worst test. She, she didn't really fail by much, but there was a couple of little things there that she fell down on, unfortunately. Let's get to a few comments anyway first. Uh, Stephen Richard is in there. Hello, Stephen. Wojciech, not sure, um, but aren't loop roads put at junctions, exits on motorways and other fast roads? Yes, Wojciech. Uh, well done that's exactly it so the sign here on the screen folks the yellow sign uh, loop road ahead so it's basically a long but very very gradual circular road that you'll find on motorways um, that will they, they kind of help keep traffic flowing because in the idea of flyovers is to kind of not interact with other traffic so having loop roads means you come like like in a loop and you nearly you nearly finish where you started the loop road if you mean if you know what I mean to get onto a different road so Loop roads are normally found on larger motorways with more complex exits to keep traffic flowing better. So that's very much correct there, Wojciech. Stephen, Richard, Stephen Richard, sorry, what's happening? Not much, Stephen, trying to do another live stream here. Hope you're keeping well. Uh, Prince Foley, yes, 
uh, sorry, a yeah, loop road, yes, Prince Fall. I was, I think I explained that there, like a long circular road that you'll find usually on motorways and things like that, um, to take you to a certain exit, let's say. Um, let's see then what else we got. Owen, is it? Owen service now. Passed my test last week for the first time at the age of 43. Well done, Owen. That's the same age as I am, actually. In NACE. Yes, NACE. A busy test centre, NACE. Very busy test centre right here. Never too late. Um, how did you get on at that junction, Owen, by the Osprey Hotel there? Uh, if you're if you're still with me, Owen, Owen service now. There's a junction there uh, by the Osprey Hotel in NACE where you're turning right, like a traffic lights. Just curious, how did you get on at that, or did you do that junction on your test? Well, congratulations, Owen, that's great news. And you're right, it's never too late, folks, never too late. Stephen Richard, how's Navin as a test venue? I don't know myself, Stephen. Um, there's so many test centres out there, I don't know. But if anybody else can uh, get in there and let us know how they get on in Navin, any particular junctions that you find awkward or any testers that are maybe nice or friendly or not so friendly, who knows? Sasha Munar again, can you go through a speed bump if changing from fourth to third gear? Or do you have to be in second gear? Sometimes there is not enough time to go down gear by gear. Sorry for the silly question. No such thing as a silly question, Sasha. There's plenty of silly answers, but no silly questions, trust me. Um. Okay, let's deal with that there then. So can you go through a speed bump if changing from fourth to third gear? The answer to your question is yes, you can, but like it wouldn't be ideal though, you know. There are some speed bumps, uh, smaller bumps you could do in third gear. Just remember, it's 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 more about the, the, the speed and the slowing down rather than the gears when it comes to speed bumps. So I'd, I'd rather you think of doing a speed bump as a, a way of just encouraging the driver to watch their speed, maybe reduce their speed and keep an eye out for any pedestrians or hazards. It's not... It's not like you have to be in a certain gear, but obviously it's going to be better to be in second gear, maybe third, but usually second gear for the speed bump. But if you handle it okay and there's not too much of a struggle and too much of a jerk or a jump and all that, it shouldn't be a disaster if you do the speed bump as you're going from fourth to third, but it's better usually to be in second gear beforehand. Um, you do be in second gear, sometimes there's not enough time. Yeah, sometimes you, you, know, you might find yourself stuck for time, but this is why as you get more experience, Sasha, and you're learning to read the road ahead, You'll hopefully find that that won't be a problem. So you have to kind of slow down gradually, let go of the accelerator, and don't be afraid to skip a gear. Okay, so let's say you're in fourth gear. Okay, um, so when you're about maybe 30 meters from the ramp, 25, 30 meters from the ramp, and you're in fourth gear, just skip like up, over, and down straight to second gear, and just cut out third gear. That's a way of saving yourself a bit of time there if you want to. You don't have to go down the gears one by one. If I'm honest, I I probably prefer people go down one by one. And the reason for that is I feel as an instructor that it, particularly when it comes to beginners, it that, that a learner driver in the early stages gets a better feel for the car, a better feel for the clutch as the clutch comes up when you go down one by one. It's like increasing your workload a little bit. It's increasing your practice and therefore improving your technique. So that's why I prefer if you go down one by one. But there's nothing wrong with skipping a gear to save yourself a bit of time. Just be careful though that you come off the clutch slowly because if you if you skip a gear too early, you know, the car might jerk and jump because it might not be ready for it. Slow down first and then drop a gear. That's the golden rule, whatever gear you're going down to. Hope that helps you, Sasha. Let me know if you have any more questions. A couple more comments then, folks, and I'm going to get into this test sheet here. Um, who's next? Stephen again. Stephen Richard. I'm doing a delivery driver course in Baldoyle. Baldoyle, that's in North Dublin, isn't it? Near Bayside, if I'm not mistaken. Through ETB, good way to tell, sorry, good way to get all lessons, test and car paid for anyone, open to anyone in receipt of social welfare payments, you get 25 hours driving, not 12. So there's some great information there from Stephen Richard, I'll read it out again. He's doing a driver, delivery driver course in Baldoy, which is in North Dublin, through ETB. Now, I'm not sure what ETB, what's ETB, um, some, training, some training board, I'd say. Um, I think I think it's some kind of training board. Good way to get the lessons and the car paid for. Um, it can be done through the social welfare because they have lots of programs as well to help people get get back to work or to improve themselves. That's a sounds a really good um, really good course there, Stephen. And thank you very much for sharing that information. Um, you get twenty five twenty five hours of driving, not not twelve. So that sounds like really really good. Uh, so check it out with your local training board or 
educational training board, I think it is. And best of luck to you on that course, Stephen. I hope it works out well for you. Um, let's see, uh, a couple more comments then, folks, and I'm going to get into this sheet here, uh, maybe two more. Man uh, Manoj Kumar S. What needs to be done when we are in signal and an emergency vehicle comes behind us? When we are in a signal. Uh, hang on, I, I presume you mean like an, an ambulance or something comes behind you. Uh, let me see where are we where are we gone. Here we go. Uh, uh, or when we're on a single lane road and no space to pull over. Um, Manoj Kumar, good question. If you are driving along and an ambulance or a fire brigade comes from behind, okay, the first thing you have to do is be aware of it, and that's why checking your mirrors every so often is good. And it is always good courtesy to pull in and to allow the emergency vehicles to overtake you. Now, sometimes that might not always be possible because you may have a single lane or something like that. So the only thing you can do then is pull in to the left as much as the road will allow and just stop and allow the vehicle to overtake you while keeping an eye on your mirrors at the same time, okay? You could maybe stick on your left indicator as well and that might let them know, let, let the other drivers know that you're not going forward or you're not in a rush. It's one of those moments, Manoj, if I'm saying your name correctly, where you have to you have to play it by ear because every situation is different. But all I can say is do your best to yield and do your best to give way when an emergency vehicle comes behind you. In many ways, it's it's part of the learning experience, you know, and there's so many different scenarios in that. It's hard to give a straight answer on that. Jag Goda, are 45 euro lessons expensive? Uh, no, not really. They're about the norm, I think. Um, like... I would, I would like personally myself. I'm only charging forty euro per lessons in Wexford, but I think I'll bring up the forty five very soon. Like, I don't really do the lessons too much anymore because I, I, I'm more focused on my YouTube channel. So it's kind of an extra, an extra thing that I just do. I, it's not my full time job or anything like that. But, um, forty five euro is probably average for the country, but it might be, it might be slightly cheap if you're in Dublin. Okay, so. 45 euros sounds about average. If anyone else wants to let me know how what they're paying for lessons, uh, let me know in the comment section, okay? So Jagoda was the last Jagoda was the last comment there on 45 euro lessons. Going to get onto this report sheet, folks. So the girl that emailed me in here, um, she unfortunately failed her test, but she didn't really fail by much. You know, if you count them up there, there's only, what is it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's only 10 marks there. Like, she literally just missed out by 2, like 8. Eight grade twos you can pass, but nine or more is a fail, unfortunately. I'm going to just let you know what she told me about the test, first of all, okay? So I'll just get my copybook here. So the first thing she said was she was feeling reasonably confident because she'd watched all my videos and she was doing lots of practice. And clearly, you know, she made a good effort, but it, like obviously it wasn't meant to be on the day. Um, so the first thing then that um, the examiner asked her was, he, he what, was, what did I write down here? He asked her about, uh, I can't even, just give me a second folks, I'm struggling to read my own writing here, sorry about this. Um, I, don't, I don't even know what I wrote, it was only a minor thing, that he, he asked her to, he asked her about um, the, some part of the car and she wasn't, she wasn't sure, but anyway, the, she remembers on the changing lanes anyway, Observation changing lanes, she lost three marks here. Now, she's saying it was because of a lack of a blind spot check when changing lanes. Now, you have to be very, very careful here, folks, when it comes to checking the blind spot changing lanes. I don't want you to, I, I really, really, really do not want you to be thinking that you have to be given this big, elaborate blind spot check when you're changing lanes, okay? You don't do that, okay? If you remember nothing else from this live stream, Remember this, when you're changing lanes, do not give a huge exotic blind spot check like this. That's not what you do, okay? I'm gonna give you some advice now that comes straight from the driving tester's supervisor's mouth, okay? Because I was there in the room when he said these words to me, okay? So I want you to listen very, very carefully on this because this is 100% what you need to be aware of and this is 100% the truth, okay? When you're moving off from the side of the road, like a parked position, yes, of course, get a big, proper blind spot out the back passenger window. But if you're changing lanes, 
you have to make sure that your chin does not go beyond your shoulder and that you just give a sideway glance as opposed to a blind spot. So it's not even correct to say a blind spot. It's, it's better to say a sideway glance when changing lanes, okay? So when you're changing lanes, check your mirrors, indicate where you're going, just check the mirrors again, and then just, just before you go across, like just literally before you go across, just give a quick sideway glance like this, just like that, just like that, and then straight back to keep so you keep your eyes on the road, okay? Now she's saying that it was because she didn't get a blind spot check. It's it could be, it could be, it could be because she got too much of a blind spot. I have to trust her and say that if 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 it was from lack of blind spot, maybe. But the most important thing when you're changing lanes anyway is that you get lots of mirror checks, okay? Particularly the side mirror as you're going across. So you get them before you change lanes and as you're changing lanes. The little quick sideway glance like that can be done just before you move the wheel over, okay? So she's got three marks there. And just be careful as well if you're changing lanes that that you, if the, if the road in front of you splits into two lanes, okay, make sure you always start in the left lane. Unless the tester says something different, always start in the left lane, okay? So that's the first piece of feedback she gave me there on that. The next one then was on hazards, okay? Now she said here, she remembered, the tester told her this, like she knows this is from the horse's mouth, that she was coming up to a pedestrian crossing up, kind of going up a slight hill by a school. There was a pedestrian emerging from an alleyway on the right and the pedestrian was about let's say 10 to 15 meters from the pedestrian crossing and the learner driver in this case stopped because she thought the person was going to cross the road but in actual fact the person had no intention of crossing the road uh, she just waited she just stood there and waited there maybe she was waiting for someone to come out of school i don't know and the tester gave her a mark then for holding up traffic because she waited too long at the pedestrian crossing when there was nobody there, okay? And that was marked under reaction to hazards, okay? Not under progress, but reaction to hazards. And that's what they'll do. They'll they'll often mark something like that on hazards because it you know it could create a potential hazard, I suppose. They're looking at it that way as well. Um Yeah, look, I mean it's a tricky one. I can safely say to you that another tester might have only given her a grade one there on reaction to hazards another tester might have even overlooked it in driving tests okay there's always going to be a little bit of discretion and a bit of flexibility one tester might like you doing something one way and another tester might like you doing something another way there's always that little bit of discretion so you have to you have to factor that in as well there okay maybe it was a bit harsh maybe the tester wanted her to keep going i don't know but anyway that's why she lost the mark on hazards there anyway folks um on that point, like I would say, it's it's hard for me to say because, I, I, you know, it's kind of those moments you wish you were there. You have to kind of read the body language of, of the pedestrian as well. Like, like have a look at where they're looking. Are they looking up the street or down the street? Or are they, like, looking directly across the road? You know, check out what kind of way are they. Are they, are they walking in a fast-paced way? Are they kind of, sl is their walk kind of slowing down a little bit and they could give you clues then about what they'll do or what they what they might not do you know it's a tricky one i know it is it's a bit of a tricky one all right the next thing she said anyway the clutch okay and she knows exactly what happened here because the tester said it to her the mark on clutch there folks where is, is there's a mark on clutch there isn't there um yeah there it is vehicle controls clutch so what happened here was the tester gave her a direction to go to the third exit to the right and then all of a sudden the tester changed his mind and said oh no sorry the first day is to the left now look at it's not ideal but the testers are only human okay they do make mistakes and they do get confused with directions every now i've done it myself in lessons it's not it's nothing it's nothing unusual we're all we're only human all of us but anyway that little bit of confusion and that little bit of mix-up clearly threw off the candidate and she ended up getting quite flustered she ended up going to the wrong gear and she ended up stalling. Now, he only gave her a mark on clutch. He didn't give her a mark on gears. He probably just thought the, the clutch was the main one there. So she probably, for example, maybe went to second gear and then accidentally took off in second gear and the car stalled. And that's why she lost the mark on clutch. Yeah, it's, it was unfortunate, just a, just a mix-up, unfortunately. But there you go, it happens. Next one then, the turnabout. She slightly clipped the curb on the turnabout. Okay, so she was doing a turnabout. Um, the old word for that is a three-point turn, but it's called a turnabout these days, not a three-point turn. A turn in the road or a turnabout is the way to, to describe it nowadays. Um, just slightly clipped the curb, no big deal. Um, 
I will I will advise you when you're doing the, the turnabout folks pardon me just make sure that you are very aware of the following things okay when you're like clutch control is very important clutch control and and brake control so clutch control is just like moving the clutch up and down to give you very slow but steady movements of the clutch and then the brake is the same it's like if you're going downhill brake control is just just having the clutch in fully but just coming on and off the brake just to regulate um the speed so it's very important that you're aware of clutch control and you maneuver very very slowly and skillfully on the turnabout now i like to think of it like this the half and half rule so on the turnabout when you're going forward for example so you're making your first turn to the right okay for the first half of your movement across the road you can go at a kind of a normal enough speed i won't say fast like but you can go like fast ish let's say but always remember for the second half of your maneuver forward or back as well of course just make sure you're going that little bit slower than you were for the first half of your journey across the road okay this means that you're going to mentally probably hopefully anyway train yourself to go that little bit slower and even if you do hit the curb you're hitting the curb at a slower pace but the slower pace gives you more time anyway to judge the curb and to make a note of any uh, space that you might have and it can improve your spatial awareness and this is particularly important when you're reversing okay so when you're reversing on the turnabout now i'm, I'm talking about the turnabout not the reverse on the corner when you're reversing on the turnabout you can reverse re at a reasonable speed let's say for the first half of the reverse but then for the latter half of the reverse make sure you're looking over your right shoulder okay right because you have a better view of the curb over the right shoulder and make sure you're slower i don't mean like really slow now like like you know taking the piss slow but but make sure you're slower on the on the latter part of the reverse and that again will help you to avoid hitting the curb because mentally you'll probably think to yourself i've been reversing a good bit here now i don't want to reverse too much further so being very very slow for the latter part is going to be very very important and again even if you do clip the curb at least you're doing it at a very slow pace Watch out for the hills too. You might notice that when you're going back, the road kind of dips down a little bit. And then maybe you might even come onto the brake a little bit more then in that case because you don't want the hill kind of dragging you down too fast. So make sure you're aware of the hills on the reverse and the hills going forward because you don't want to accidentally go too fast. That's why it's so important to, to look around first and judge the gravity and watch out for the hills that are there and it could help you to uh, you know maneuver better on the turnabout. Okay, next thing then she said, progress. So progress is for going too slow or being too hesitant. She lost the marker on progress on the straight and progress on roundabouts. Now the one she remembers was on the roundabouts, yeah. So she admits she was a little bit slow on the roundabout. She was too slow on it. Now there's two aspects to that. There's, there's, there's the entry to the roundabout and when you're actually on it, okay. I I was given a lesson there yesterday or two days ago to a girl and she was coming on to the roundabout. It was kind of a mini roundabout, but it was a, a sort of a wider mini roundabout with the white circle in the middle. But from our side it was kind of a little bit uphill. And then it became more flatter later on. So she probably just in, in my lesson with her, she she probably didn't really didn't really react to the hill because she was kind of accelerating at a, at a sort of a normal pace and the clutch was not quite up enough so she was going a bit slow for the first half of the um, journey on the roundabout but because it was a bit of an uphill she actually needed to give it a little bit of juice and that way it looks more normal and looks more natural and looks more confident you know so there's there's the entry to the roundabout where you have to be you know not too slow but then there's the bit when you're already on the roundabout as well where you have to be wary of hills be wary of your space and try not to be too slow because it has to look confident enough as well you know next thing she said then um the yielding at the roundabout well she 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 didn't say anything about this because she doesn't remember so do you see there near the end the second last this the second last mark there where it says yield right of way at roundabout so the tester is saying that she needed to give way to somebody else who had the priority she doesn't really remember this but i want to I've had this myself um, over the last few weeks with people in the car, so I, I can tell you now some very important tips on this. If you're on a roundabout, okay, you have to be careful of a few things. First of all, watch out 
if the roundabout is blind. A blind roundabout means that even when you're at or near the line, you still don't have a good view to the right. So in that case, you will have to slow down and maybe go into first gear when you're at or just before the line so you can edge up a little bit to get a better view. Because if there's somebody coming from the right and you don't see them, you will still have to give way to them because they don't have any like um, obligation to stop to you, stop for you because you're on their left and they're on your right. So if you are blinded, you will have to be careful and just kind of slip around the first gear and maybe edge up and just kind of like lean forward and do do you know lots of looks like that because you have to you have to treat blind roundabouts with the greatest of caution and respect. You can't just barge out onto them because you could easily and accidentally pull out in front of somebody if that's the case. So be careful of that. Another thing about the the roundabouts as well is one, I remember one particular one particular roundabout in Wexford. You're, again, you're you're kind of coming up up a slight hill. And then in the middle of the roundabout, in, in the middle centre circle, we have like like plants and things like that and, and kind of small trees. And, and they're kind of blocking the view of the driver from what's coming straight ahead. Now, the main priority on a roundabout is to give way to the right and anybody already on the roundabout. But if there's somebody coming from straight on, like, like from 12 o'clock, and they're kind of going at a bit of pace because they don't have to yield to anybody, so they're just going on the roundabout, then all of a sudden they're going to be on the roundabout or on your right or both within a matter of seconds so if you're approaching a roundabout and you think you might be slightly blinded um in terms of your vision of what's straight ahead 12 o'clock just be careful and make sure that there's nobody coming down from 12 o'clock that's going to suddenly come onto the roundabout and suddenly have right of way so just watch out for that one that's that can be that can be a pitfall that people fall into as well um, you always on roundabouts as well, you have to try and judge the speed and the space. A lot of people say, oh, what about the indicators, or he wasn't indicating, or she wasn't indicating. The indicators, you know, they're not really that important, because most Irish people don't have a clue how to use indicators anyway. So, when you're on a roundabout, and you're trying to judge the cars on the right, or the cars on the roundabout, think of two things. How fast are they going, and what kind of space do you have? So think of it like this, if you were a pedestrian, would you cross the road in that space? If the answer is yes, well then maybe you might have an opportunity to go. But it's not the same, obviously, it's just, I'm just giving you an example there. So think of it like this, are the other cars that are on the right, are they coming down a pretty steep hill, okay, and they're say 30 metres away, I probably wouldn't go then, but if they're coming up a big hill, and they're 25, 30 metres away, and you have a little bit of momentum, well, then you could keep going, possibly. Like I said, the, I'm just pondering different scenarios here. It, it, it's, it's, it's a, you have to judge each one individually. It completely depends on the moment that you're in, okay? But try and judge how much space you have between you and the other car. Be aware of hills as well. Be aware of gravity. Maybe if you're on a downhill, you might get a quicker move off. And if they're, on, if they're coming down a hill, they might have to be, you know, yield to because they're they they're going to have more momentum. There's so many things there you have to consider, and the best thing to do is just practice, get lessons, and you'll get better at judging these things over time. So they're the main things she said to me on the, on the test anyway. Just go down through a few things I didn't mention there anyway. We go from the top, rules and checks, grade two. This is about the theory and the road signs. So. Unfortunately, she got three or more questions or signs wrong. And look, at sometimes the theory and science can catch people out. It's not a big deal. It's only a small part of the overall test. The most you can lose on this is uh, just the one grade two mark that she lost. So don't don't go worrying or stressing that you're going to fail your test over theory. Yes, that's, that's not that's not going to happen. If you're going to no, I haven't said that. Like it it's it's a grade two mark that adds adds up with the overall other overall marks that can cause you to fail but it, it the theory and road signs cannot cause you to fail on their own okay they can accumulate with other marks that cause you to fail you just need to go over the theory and signs a bit more you know look over her signs her questions make sure you know what the yellow box is make sure you know what a clearway is yellow box don't stop no stopping no parking exception is when you're turning right a clearway no stopping or parking keep it clear for for moving vehicles there's lots of questions and signs there. A lot of them are common sense. Some of them you have to memorize and work on uh, there. Uh, position on bench, just a grade one mark. So the grade ones don't really matter overall. The only time they matter is if they're if it's consistently if you're consistently making the same grade one mark, well then if you do it again, it might turn into a grade two then because the tester might be cutting you a bit of slack the first time or two, but then you might say, Oh here, this is coming a bit of a habit here. 
I'm going to give them a grade 2 for this one. But on their own, they don't matter. They're only minor marks. So, a little, little bit out of position on bends. I, I do see that a lot in the lessons I give, actually, with people. I'm always correcting that. If you're on a bend, generally speaking, there's two types of bends. A left bend and a right bend. But the left bend could be kind of wider bend or it could be tighter bend. So, there are there's kind of there is more detail but but generally on a right bend when the bend disappears to the right up ahead you have to stay more left and on a left bend you can stay a bit more central this is to, to give you a better view of the road ahead so when you stay more left on the right bend it just means that you've got a better view around the hedge or around the wall and you'll see the other cars better and they'll see you a bit sooner and a bit better too okay the more common mistake i suppose is the right bends in my experience where people that are going onto a right bend and they end up just being that little bit too close to the center white line where they need to be a bit more left because the, the the road is kind of dragging them that way as such so and of course the time to be aware of this is before the bend starts because when you're already on the bend it might be too late because you might already be a bit central so try and identify the bend as early as possible and then keep a little bit more left um before and during the time that you're traveling on the right bend okay uh, so that was that just a grade one there observation change lens we, we talked about it was possibly to do with the blind spot maybe not enough mirror checks it all depends hazards we we talked about it was just to she stopped when she didn't need to stop at a pedestrian crossing too cautious there signals overtaking so whenever you see signals it's just to do with um lack of proper use of your indicators so in this case it was just a grade one like it's no big deal but in this case signals overtaking it could be to do with um, not indicating properly. Maybe the indicator went off. Maybe she left it on a little bit too long. Maybe she indicated, but then when she moved out, it, the indicator went off way too early. It, it could be any number of things. It was just a grade one mark. Um, uh, some people ask me actually as well, which is an important point. If you're overtaking a line of cars, okay, so you, you know you check your mirrors indicate move out early and gradually and make sure you give way to any oncoming cars and you normally get the indicator off when you're level with the first car let's say there's five cars okay so get get the indicator off when you're level with the first car because by that stage you're already out on the road you're you, you are where you said you were going to be so any further indicator could tell people that you're turning right like you know but then let's say you have to come in to the left a little bit to give way to oncoming cars well then do not indicate that you're coming back into the left okay because what, what will that mean? People would, might think you're parking, okay? And that would be a misleading signal. So you don't want to do that. Just come in and slow down. And then maybe, uh, not maybe, definitely indicate to the right. Well, I'm presuming that if that's if you're moving out again. Um, to let people know that you're looking to move out once the oncoming cars have come through, okay? So don't indicate left uh, when you're coming in to give way to oncoming cars. Because that could let people know that you're indicating on the left and you know if other cars overtake you then you know you're you're potentially creating a danger there okay so that signal is overtaking progress so we talked about progress on the roundabout she was a little hesitant a little slow on the roundabout maybe didn't give it enough juice maybe maybe she was too cautious but then progress on the straight is one that comes up quite a lot actually just driving too slow on a straight road i think i think these days people are getting a little bit confused with the whole 50 versus 30 like 50 is the general speed limit around town. Then there's, there's there's a lot of 30 zones now as well, particularly in housing estates. They're kind of called slow zones in housing estates that, that are there to kind of um, encourage cars to, to drive slower in residential areas. It's just a part of the thing. You have to be conscious of your speed limit signs, okay? The, and always remember the last speed limit sign that you saw is the most relevant one. I know it's I know it's hard to do that because you're probably thinking of so many other things, but if in doubt, generally speaking, and I'm, and I'm just speaking generally here, if in doubt, the speed limit is fifty kilometers, okay. But even though I've just said that, you always have to adjust your speed based on the conditions. So if there's a road with a load of potholes and a load of speed bumps, and you know you're 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 in the middle of a residential area, you wouldn't really be going fifty then. You know you have to judge it based on the conditions that you have, okay. But if you have a good straight road outside of a residential zone don't be afraid to give it some juice get up to 50 kilometers maybe 60 it depends on the speed limit and, and up to fourth gear as well sometimes the gears can be tied in with that as well because if you're in third gear you might be going too slow and you know you might you might need to be in fourth gear when you're only in third gear so 
Make sure you get up the gears accordingly there. The, the, as, I look at, as I keep saying, it depends on the situation. The clutch anyway, she stalled, got a bit of a gear mix up, uh, stalled the car, that's what the clutch mark was there. Yield right of way, we talked about that, she, she apparently pulled out in front of somebody. But but when I say pulled out in front of somebody, it sounds a bit dramatic. It, it, it probably wasn't too bad. Like She probably pulled out, but the other car didn't have to come to a screeching halt. The other car probably just had to brake slightly and then everybody got on with their day. Um, it wasn't a serious one. Sometimes when you see a yield mark, you kind of you nearly think the worst. But um, it was probably due to a failure to judge or analyze the traffic properly, and she may have just slightly pulled out in front of somebody because she didn't judge the traffic. She probably just needed to give way to somebody on the road. As I, I talked about that a few minutes ago, anyway. And then the turnabout as well. We talked about that. She just clipped the curb there, as I said. So she probably just needed to go a little bit slower on the latter part of her maneuvers, just to kind of. Um, handle the speed a little bit better there uh yeah anyway it's like 10 marks you know i mean it's 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 kind of hard on her because i mean if you think of the if she had it if she could have just kind of cut out two of those marks there she would have been fine so like for example if she had had a little bit of better observation change in lanes and if she had been a little bit more decisive you know you know if she had just not clipped that curb on the turnabout if she had not done two of that, any two of those three she would have been fine like you know but unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be, and all we can do is hope that the person learns from it and is a better driver for it. Okay, so hope you and I hope you've learned from that as well. Okay, folks, let's get back to some comments then before I go to the home straight. So the last comment was on the price of driving lessons, I think. Yeah, Jago did there. Yeah, and the next one then was, it's me. Is it? It's me. Yeah. Are there cars which have cheaper insurance for seventeen-year-old learner, or are they all crazy prices? Uh, a bit of both to be honest with you now i'm not an expert on insurance or anything like that so i i don't really know i have heard a story about some insurance companies not insuring young drivers unless they have the 12 lessons done um i don't know if that's true i mean sounds a bit harsh to be honest with you but i mean they, they may have the ability to do that but you should be able to get insurance on the car anyway without having the 12 lessons that might just be a thing some insurers do there are going to be insurers out there that will quote for younger drivers, okay? There's a place in Waterford called Hooper Dolan um, in Waterford City. I know they, they will quote young drivers. There's a broker in Dublin who I use. Um, First Ireland is the name. First Ireland. They will definitely quote for young drivers. And I've seen that ad. What's that ad on the telly? Um, quote Devil or something like that. They, I mean, they're, they're bound to give a quote as well. Um, Aviva. AXA, they have driving instructors as well, so you, you can get an Aviva driving instructor, um, an AXA driving instructor, and, you know, so Aviva is with, um, they have their own school actually, and AXA is the ISM, Irish School of Motoring, so there are options out there, you know, I, I'm not an expert, I, I don't know, but I'm just, from what I hear anyway, so you just have to shop around. Stephen Richard again, no worries then, thanks for all your help, my pleasure Stephen, if you Google Fetch Courses, they're all over the country, not just Dublin, might be of help. So this is for a driving course, folks, that, for example, delivery drivers, and maybe they do truck truck drivers, all that kind of stuff as well, uh, where the social welfare will pay a good portion of the cost of the lessons and the test, and you get 25 lessons there, according to Stephen. So check that out, fetch courses for um, uh, delivery driver courses and things like that. Thanks for, thanks for sharing that, Stephen. Hazel Eyed. Hazel eyes is our next comment, just like my eyes, hazel eyes. Passed my test a couple of days ago. My tester told me I'm a really good driver. Yay, that's brilliant news. Hazel eyes, well done. You did very well. You uh, have a full European license now to look forward to. So congratulations. And you are, de look at, folks, if you can pass the Irish driving test, you are a very good driver because it is of a high standard. And, you know, as I said to you earlier on, when you have to deal with all the different testers that have all have their own likes and dislikes it's always a good achievement to pass a test and even more so if you pass your motorbike test as well or your truck test as well or whatever okay so well done to his light there great job and Stephen echoes that yeah jack mb i pay 45 euro too great and sinead p pays 40 euro per lesson in cabin that's what that's in wexford as well yeah although i have heard a few in 45 as well and um, his light 50 euro in that loan my goodness not surprised. I'm not. I like. I'm not shocked. Like now, if it's over fifty euro, it'd be a bit. 
a bit mad now. You know, maybe the maybe some of the some of the bigger ones are charging that. But um, Hazelite says again, thanks, Dane, for all the tips. Very help. You're very welcome, Hazelite, and I'm, gr I'm delighted to hear your good news. So congratulations, and you're most welcome. Uh, glad I was able to help point you in the right direction. Sinead P failed mine on ten. Oh God, yeah, ten grade twos, just like this girl last week so disappointing i know how you feel sinead i've seen many many driving test tests and i've sat in the car with many people who have done the same failed by one or two but if there's any consolation even though you failed you have to look at it this way you are still one day closer to getting your full license okay you just have to keep at it and learn from it and don't let them get you down go again practice again you will become a better driver for this you will become more focused and you will become more aware so Best of luck next time. If you want to email me your sheet, that just email me, danetai at gmail.com. Uh, sorry, I don't have the email on screen there. I forgot to put it up, but it, sh it should be in the in the description to this video or any or any video. Like. Um, yeah, I know it's this point. Hard luck there, Sinead. Fr uh, Frostbite337. My first driving instructor told me €45 Euro for one hour, but 100 for two hour? That's a bit... Uh, that doesn't make any sense anyway. Forty-five euro for one hour, but a hundred for two hour. How does that? That doesn't make any sense. And you actually, I asked the question as well. You to be, you think now if he's going to do a special offer, the more you do, the the the, the less the overall price will be. But you know, that's that's crazy, all right. But so some instructors will have special offers as well. You know, like like for twelve lessons or something like that. Like I would have, I would charge forty euro per lesson. But then if if someone paid everything up front, then I I would. You know, I would say, okay, we do all 12 for, say, 400 or something like that, or 440. Uh, so sometimes you will get special offers if you pay up front. Depends on the instructor. Um, Hazelite said, all the best to anybody learning, waiting for a test. If I can do it, anyone can. Well, don't don't put yourself down there now. You 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 did very well to do your test. So. But it goes to show, if you, if you work at it and keep at it and put the work in, you can achieve your driving goals. Congrats again, Hazelite. Thanks for the comments. 50 euro is expensive, Sinead. Very expensive. Yeah, indeed it is. Um, and Hazel, I said as well, for it, it, it is very expensive for rents as well. Yeah, yeah, that's just a little bit of stuff. So I wasn't considering, I wasn't, I didn't have like Athlone in County Westmead as a hotspot for expensive lessons. Maybe Cork, maybe Dublin. Yeah, but not, not Athlone, but there you go. Um, nuts. I was paying 35 euro in Dublin a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, that's right. 35 was kind of the go-to price a couple of years ago. Yep. Yeah. And when I started out, I was I was charging that between that and 30 when I started out 10 to 12 years ago. Yeah. Stephen Richard, same here. Instructor being used in the course told me he charges 50 euro. So with that in mind, they're giving me 25 lessons. 50 euro. Yeah. So it's steep enough now. Yeah. John Gorman passed my test on Thursday. Seven grade twos. Your videos were a great help. Thanks, Saint. You're very welcome, John. Um, I'm very glad to hear that, and you did very well. So you you proved to be a really, really, really good driver. And uh, congratulations to you. You too have a full European license to look forward to. So look after it. Um, and Anita T, M fifties, M fifties. Is that fifty? Is that about the lessons? I'm not quite sure what that's what that's about. Hang on, I'm not getting the comments back. Um. Yes, certainly. Congratulating John. Well done, John. Tommy McGuire passed my test last week. Eight grade two. You just scraped it, Tommy, but you did well. Your information was invaluable. And it's a pleasure, Tommy. I like to make this information freely available. In some ways, it goes back to an experience I had when I started out. And I asked, I asked one or two instructors about their thoughts on certain things. And they basically told me to, you know, go take a run and jump. So I said to myself, God, I don't want to end up like that. I don't want to be like that with that kind of insecurity and bitterness. So that's part of the reason why I do this. And I, it's great to see that the information is, is going well beyond the southeast and is going to all parts of the country to help you all achieve your driving goals uh, through free, high-quality content that it's my pleasure to make. So well done to you, Tommy. It's a pleasure to help you, and congrats. You're very welcome. You're saying thanks. Very welcome. And a couple of people saying, well done, Tommy. Absolutely. Sure, we all share the congratulations there. Always great to see no, somebody else get their full license. Um, Sinead, you're very welcome. Uh, uh, all the best. Them. And to, to Sinead or Tommy or anybody else, my email is daintai at gmail.com. If you have any tips or if you're looking for any advice or you want me to look at your report sheet, just let me know, okay? Um, moving down along then, John Bolton passed my test 
first time in this on Thursday with three grade twos only. Good videos were a great help. Thank you. You're very welcome, Josh. Um, you you did very well. So congratulations. That's that's good. Nace is one of the busier test centres all right in the country. So it's great to hear that Josh uh, passes test there. So well done to you, Patrick Asikawi. I think if I'm saying that correctly, Patrick. I got two grade. I got two marks, sorry, on grade two for moving off and changing lanes. I have my driving test on Monday. Any tips? Are you saying on the last test, Patrick? I, I presume you mean the last test, two marks on grade two for moving off and changing lanes. Is that is that grade? Grade two. Okay, I'll 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 do that now. I, I, so first of all, Patrick, best of luck on Monday. I hope it goes well for you. Just take a one road at a time, and one maneuver at a time. And try not to think too much about the past and try not to think too much about the future. Just deal with the deal with the driving test in the moment, one direction at a time, okay? Moving off. Um you didn't say what, like is it observation moving off or progress moving off or something like that? We'll go we'll let's like let's say it's, it's observation. It's it's usually down to not checking the blind spot properly. Some people when they're moving off, they don't do a proper blind spot. They might just kind of just go side like that and then the, and then the the, the shoulder here stays flat when you're moving off from the side of the road you have to get a good proper blind spot like that so the other shoulder should come forward like that and at the same time your head should turn and you should be looking at the back passenger window not not your own window the back passenger window as well because that's where the blind spot is like and the mirrors will help too another thing about with moving off is very often progress moving off is tied into observation moving off because if you're a little bit slow moving off and you're a little bit slow getting the juice and getting the bringing the clutch up to get the bite well then that means that your your observation moving off can suffer you know your 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 blind spot has gone completely out of date so that's where you have to refresh the three mirrors and the blind spot again just to keep things up to date and then then you can go again okay so it's very important that you understand that one you have to get a proper blind spot okay and two you have to make sure that you update the blind spot if needed okay and then three, make sure you're make sure you're confident and you're decisive moving off and that you're comfortable getting the juice and getting the bite. Because if you're not, it could delay you moving off, and then that then is tied into having your blind spot go out of date, like okay. So very important there. And another little tip as well. The first few seconds that you move off, just keep an eye on your right side mirror once or twice as you move off. It's kind of like your last look, it's kind of like a confirmation look. It just puts the icing on the cake as you move off, okay? And lastly, I'm moving off. I meant you'll see my videos one two three okay one gear stick go to the first gear two indicators indicate to the right and then three mirrors blind spot off you go then bob's your father's brother i always say if you do the blind spot mirrors and blind spot last it's better it's most up to date and it's fresher in your head then i have heard people using the gosh method g-o-s-h which is gears observation um s for signal and H for handbrake. Uh, you, look, if that works for you, go for it. But it, but it, it like the one, two, three is better because the, the the three mirrors and blind spot are last and more up to date. That's why that's why that's better. Okay. Patrick also mentioned about, about changing lanes. Yeah, I've looks like I've, I've a few videos on changing lanes there, Patrick. It's very very important that you get lots of mirror checks changing lanes. Okay. But first of all, always start in the left lane. If you're in doubt, start in the left lane. Watch out for any signs, watch out for any markings, watch out for any hatch lines as well that you might have to maneuver around. When you're when it comes to changing lanes in, check the mirrors, indicate, make sure you double check the mirrors, quick little sideway glance if you can. Now you, you don't have to get the sideway glance, it's not like it's not absolutely essential, but it is advised. And move across kind of gradually. Don't 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 jerk the wheel across. But even here's the big one, folks. Even as you're moving across, keep double checking the mirrors as you're moving across it's very very important that you don't just suddenly start looking straight once you once you've crossed the white line you have to keep double checking the mirrors as you're going across and changing lanes a quick blind spot check before you cross the white line is advised strongly advised but don't do the blind spot if you think it's going to put you in danger ahead or if you're going and you obviously i said to you earlier on in this stream don't do a big blind spot when changing lanes because you can't take your eyes off the road for too long okay so I hope that helps you there, um, Patrick, um, on moving off and changing lanes. Best of luck to you on Monday. Let me know how you get on. Adrian Egan, watched your watched all your 
pa- videos, I presume, and passed the second time. Thought I'd failed it. Thanks for the help. Um, in f- 40, you're 48, is that what you're saying? I, you're 48, I think, uh, so it wasn't easy. Well, congratulations, Adrian. And it's even better for you, Adrian. It's, it, in fact, I'd say it's an even bigger achievement if you're kind of a little bit hardy like yourself there at 48. Uh, so I often find the driving will catch up with a lot of people. They might have put it off or they might not have done it in their younger years. But very often it kind of catches up on you because you might you might need your full license to look after a sick relative or for work or something like that. So it does catch up on you. That's why if you're watching this video and you're young, do the driving lessons and the test when you're young and get it over with and then you can move on with the rest of your life then without, without having this hanging over you, you know. So the well done to you, Adrian. Um, second time, no bother. We, we all we all have our own pace at this journey. Everybody gets there in their own time. So well done to you. You too have a full European license to enjoy. And 48, look, you can do it at any age, folks. If anything, I'm, I'll, I'll say this unofficially, if anything, the testers are probably going to be a little bit more lenient with uh, older drivers because they probably know deep down that they're not going to be going around doing donuts and housing estates that they're probably needed for for uh, for good reasons okay so don't let age be a barrier to doing this test anybody can do it at any age okay last gonna wrap up soon folks last few comments josh bolton was charged 50 euro for an hour and 95 for two uh just outside dublin Probably sounds about right, Josh, for Dublin. Yeah, 95 for two hours, not the worst, I suppose, you know. What's that for? This, whatever it is, 45 and a bit, is it? Yeah, it's probably not that surprising, yeah. So it's it sounds like the price of lessons is around about 40 euro outside of Dublin and in more rural areas, but then you're kind of getting to 45, 50 as you get closer to bigger cities in Dublin. Yeah, that's what it's looking like, yeah. Which is what I suspect it really. Um, Omar, is a bad to use your own or parents car for lessons i am very large and don't fit easily in a lot of the cars used by instructors omar it is perfectly fine to use your own car or your parents or partner's car whatever as long as that car is legal and roadworthy and taxed and insured and all that all that kind of stuff yes i always say to people like use the car that you're more comfortable in use you know because if you're more comfortable in that car mentally you're going to be more comfortable and you might have a little bit more confidence. So, Omar, the very best look to you. Use your own car or your parents' car, whichever you want. You, you are under no obligation to use the driving instructor's car. Um, it might it might be. It, I mean, it's certainly a viable and easy option for someone to use a driving school car because they, you know, you don't have to worry about tax insurance and all that kind of stuff, and it's going to be well maintained, all that stuff. But there's nothing wrong with using your own car as well, as long as you're able to drive it and as long as you're at a good standard and it's legal and roadworthy as well. Because you have to you have to go what's best for you, you know, and if you feel comfortable in that, then stay there in that car, Omar, okay? And the best look to you. Let me know if, if you have any questions or comments. Uh, email me, daintai at gmail.com. Last couple of comments, folks. Going to wrap up soon. Jagoda again. Yes, my lesson's in Tralee. 45 euro. Yeah, so Tralee is probably a slightly bigger town than, than other towns, so 45 euro is probably about right. Patrick, first test. Well, okay, Patrick. The, the Sorry, you were saying the you failed the first time, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, great. And obs- Yes, so I, I mentioned that on observation moving off. Yeah, okay. And the very best look to you, Patrick, on Monday. Is that what you said? Monday, I think, yeah. Um, I'll be signing off here now in a few minutes. So, Patrick Asikawi, if I'm saying that correct, apologies if I'm not. Email me daintai at gmail.com if you have any other questions and I'll help you out there, uh, Patrick. Omar says thanks. You're very welcome, Omar. And thank you very, all very much for tuning in. It's As I said, it's great to see people here putting their questions in and letting me know about the price of lessons and about their own experience. Because when you let me know about your experience and what your instructors or testers say, it helps me and it helps others as well. So best of luck to anybody doing a test. Best of luck to anybody who has just passed a test. Stay safe on the roads, folks, and I will be back very soon with another video. And thanks for being with me. Thanks for sharing your Saturday morning with me, and best wishes to you. All the best. Bye.